In this installment of the Python Beyond Intermediate series, we'll be covering imports, modules, packaging, and everything in between. It is very often assumed knowledge, and this attitude leaves errors and gaps in understanding uncorrected until your code either breaks overtly or efforts to find the source of strange program behavior remain fruitless. Let's go ahead and create a module called number funks. You'll notice that all I've done is create a regular Python file, and that's all there is to it. A Python module is created by making a Python source file. There are naming restrictions, such as it has to begin with a letter, and convention is for module names to be all lowercase. Let's include a module doc string and include two functions, adder and generalized adder. Adder takes two arguments and returns those arguments added together. Generalized adder includes an element we haven't discussed before. The asterisk args is Python's way of accepting an arbitrary number of positional arguments. The other type of argument you should be aware of are keyword arguments. In order to accept an arbitrary number of keyword arguments, we put two asterisks followed by quarks conventionally. The positional arguments we supply are then placed into a tuple by the interpreter. That's why, by returning some args, some can iterate over the values and give us the desired output. In order to use our new module, let's import it. For now, we stay in the folder that we wrote the module in, open up the interpreter, and then import number funks. You'll notice that we haven't included the file extension, and indeed if we were to do so, we would get a module not found error. The newly imported module creates with it the module namespace. That is to say, if we want to use our new adder and generalized adder functions, we need to call them with the dot notation. An alternative to this is to use the syntax from module, import, and then whatever object we want to import from the module. Modules only get loaded once. And you'll notice on input lines five and seven that I've imported adder twice. When modules are imported, they only get loaded once. There's a cache going on behind the scenes. In order to take a look at this, we can import the modules object from sys. I encourage you to take a look at this in your own time. Furthermore, even if we seemingly import individual objects from a module, the entire module source code is still executed from top to bottom, left to right. The benefit is minimal pollution of the main namespace, in addition to the normal benefits conferred through caching. How does Python know where to look for modules and packages? Whenever the Python interpreter starts, sys.path is assembled. If your module is not in a directory, zip, or egg file listed in sys.path, then you'll receive an import error. Python looks for the module you're attempting to import in order from the path listed first, then the next, and then the next. It stops if it encounters a matching module or package. That means that this is a legitimate thing to consider if you're experiencing odd behavior from your code and you've already tried deleting the dunder pycache directory. Package managers sometimes make changes to sys.path. A useful tip to be aware of is passing the capital S flag to the Python interpreter when trying to identify issues. What this will do is start the interpreter with a sys.path of a base Python installation, as demonstrated here. So what's a package? Packages are larger collections of code, and they're composed normally of multiple modules. To make our demonstration package, let's add a second module first. This module is called string funks, and all it can do is concatenate two strings. We make a directory. This directory will be called our package name. Inside this directory is a dunder init file. I'll show you what we can do with the dunder init file in a second. As you can see here, I've decided to call this package combined package. Each level of hierarchy 
within the package is contained in its own directory. You should place an empty dunder init.py file within each directory, even though for most use cases, the file will be empty. I'm demonstrating a submodule here with the functions directory within the combined package package. As you can see, at zero bytes large, it's an empty file. As we can also see, this function submodule contains the number funks and string funks modules that we've created earlier. As you can see here, I've decided to call this package combined package. Each level of hierarchy within the package is contained in its own directory. You should place an empty dunder init.py file within each directory, even though for most use cases, the file will be empty. I'm demonstrating a submodule here with the functions directory within the combined package package. As you can see, at zero bytes large, it's an empty file. As we can also see, this function submodule contains the number funks and string funks modules that we've created earlier. In order to show you absolute versus relative imports, I'll replace the top level dunder init.py file in the directory combined package with an empty dunder init.py file. Here, we can see that we can import the combined package but if we do dir combine package, we can't see any of our submodules or modules. If we import combine package.functions, we see the correct notation for importing a submodule. The submodule is imported using the dot notation. Our modules are nowhere to be found here either. So let's go ahead and import combined package.functions.stringfunks. This time, not only can we see that we have imported our function, but we can use it and it works fine. But this is starting to become rather unwieldy, especially for our end user. So what we can do is create a kind of patchwork with the top level dunder init.py file. The one import notation that I've yet to talk about is the from module import asterisk. Just before we go there though, instead of using absolute imports, we can use relative imports. And indeed, if we use relative imports, then personally I find it easier because we can change the package name and the rest of our code won't break. The single dot at the start of functions, rather like on the command line, denotes the current directory. If we put two dots here, then what it will do is it will look in the directory above, just the same as on the command line as well. This will import everything that's contained within that module. It turns out that we can decide to import on mass in our top level dunder init file, and then within each module itself, we can define exactly which functions we want to export by defining them in a list of strings in the dunder all attribute. We can then return to our top level package dunder init.py file, define dunder all as being equal to the result of concatenating those modules dunder all attribute. We've decided to export the generalized adder function in the number funks module, and even though in the top level dunder init.py file, we've seemingly imported everything with the asterisk, the adder function has not been exported. I hope you've enjoyed part one of this two-part series on imports, modules, and packages. As always, I do welcome feedback and do let me know how I'm doing and any requests for the future. Thank you.